Okay, so welcome to day six. <clears throat> Today is supposed to be a very simple one. So you're going to learn the difference, um, the differences between what a graph of a function looks like versus the graph of a non-function. And then we're going to be able to just go over a few details about functions so that you'll be able to answer this question when you have it on your Accuplacer exam. So this number six actually comes from the original algebra and functions um, practice test. And then I have several other examples, several other graphs that we're just going to go through. And we're going to see if we can tell whether these graphs are based off actual functions or if they don't follow the rules of a function. So let's go ahead and read question six and see how we can figure this out. It says, which of the following is the graph of a function where y is equal to f of x? Now, this y is equal to f of x may seem a little bit confusing. But the one word that should be causing you to do ding, ding, ding is the word function. So what does a word function mean? Well, when you're talking about a function, it's also represented by an equation. This is the equation it's represented by. But the main rule of every function is that for every input, there's only one output. Meaning if you put a number into this equation, y is equal to f of x then there should only be one answer that comes out of the equation. Pretend like it's a factory, you put in one material, and then out comes one object. Now, if you were to put in one material and out comes two different objects, then it would not classify as a function. So what do I mean by input versus output? Well, the fancy word for input is domain, and the word for output is the range. So all that really means is the domains are the x's and the range are the y's. So for every x or value for x that you put into an equation, there should only be one output for a y. So how is that in relation to an actual graph? And I'm going to show you this and then you're going to be like, wow, Miss Amber, that's super easy. But before we go to the super easy part, I just want you guys to have that background knowledge, the background information. So where are the x's on this first graph? So the x-axis is going across here. So let's just give it some numbers. One, two, three. So the x-axis, these are the numbers for the x's. And then this graph is drawn here. I'm going to use a different color. So we're going to go ahead. And when you plug in number one, you get this point and this point. So say that this is at one and this is at negative one. When you input the number one, you end up with two outputs, okay? When you input the number two, there is a point here and a point here. So you end up with two outputs. Or when you put in the number three, there is a point on top of the three and below the three. So there's two inputs for each one of them. So does it follow the rule? For every input, there's only one output. No, it does not. So this is not a function. But what is an easier way to do that? All you actually have to do is just draw a vertical line. So if you draw a vertical line and you get, it passes through the, the line twice. So in this case, it passed twice. It passed through the line twice. It passed through the line twice. If you draw vertical lines over this line and it passes through those vertical lines twice or more than twice, it is not a function. Okay, so let's move on to B. And I know this may seem confusing now, but it should be super simple once we do a bunch of examples. So again, for every one input, there should be one output. So this is the X axis. The inputs are the X's. So say that this is input one, two, three. Well, if you just look at it, there is a point here on the one and there's a point here on the one. And there's a point here on the two and a point there on the two and a point here on the three and a point there on the three. So for every X, there's two points or two Y's. So you can also do that by making vertical lines. So go ahead and just make vertical lines and you'll see that this circle, every time you make a vertical line, it passes through the circle at two points on your vertical line, two points on your vertical line, two points on your vertical line. So 
is it following the rules that for every one input, there should be one output? No, it is not. Because when you make those vertical lines, it's going through the graph at two different points. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at C. Now, again, the X's are going across here. And let's go ahead and just label a few of the X's. So say this is negative two, this is negative three, this is one, and this is two. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw some vertical lines over those numbers. Okay, and if you look at it, those vertical lines only go through one point on the graph, one point on the graph, one point on the graph. So for every X, there's only one Y or one point. So is this a, a example of a function? Yes. How do we know? Because for every X, there's only one Y. How else do we know? Because when we draw those vertical lines, it's only going through one point on the graph. So yes, this is a function. So we're gonna keep going, and the more we do this, the more comfortable you're gonna feel. So again, we're gonna go ahead and see if this is a function. So this is the X or the inputs. Let's just go ahead and give them some numbers. One, two, negative one, negative two. And let's go ahead and draw some vertical dashes over those numbers, some vertical lines. Okay, so this one goes only through one, that's good. This only goes through one, good. This goes through one, good. This goes through one, good. But what if I were to draw a vertical line right down the center? That goes through this point and that point. So it almost passed the, the criteria for being a function, but one of the vertical lines does have more than one point when you go through the graph. So is this a function? No, it is not. Okay. So we have several other examples. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we have nine more examples. By the ninth example, you should feel more confident with this. So I don't think I have to go over and do the X's for you because I think you understand that the X's represents the input. And so we're gonna go ahead and just make our vertical lines. So we're gonna go ahead and make a few vertical lines over the graph and we're gonna count how many points it goes through. So one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three. So does that follow the rule? Every one input, there should be one output? No, it does not. So no, it's not a function. What about this graph? We're gonna go ahead and make some vertical lines, vertical line, vertical line, vertical line, and count the points that it goes through. That's only one, only one, only one, only one. So for every X, there's only one Y or one point. So is this a function? Yes, it is. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the next one. So we're gonna go ahead and make our verticals, vertical line, vertical line, and let's count how many points go through. Okay, one, two, one, two, one, two. So is this a function? No, it is not, because there's two values of what for y for every x. So say that this was x, one, two. So they say this was x equals two. There's two points that one goes up and one goes down. So say this was x is equal to five. There's a point on the top and there's a point on the bottom for five. So there's two outputs. Say this was negative three, x equals negative three. Well, when x equals negative three, there is a point on the top and a point on the bottom. So because those vertical lines you're drawing them, you're literally able to see with every x, how many y's are there or how many points how many times does that vertical line go through a point in the graph? If it's more than one time, then it's not a function. All right, let's keep going. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to make some vertical lines, vertical lines, and how many points? Only one point, only one point, only one point, only one point. So each vertical line only goes through the graph at one point. So that means for every one in input, there's only one output. So yes, it is a function. Good job. So let's go ahead and continue. We're gonna make our verticals, make our verticals, make our verticals, and then we're gonna count. So this is two, this is two, and this is two. So for every X, there's two Y's. No, it is not a function. And let's keep going. So we're gonna go ahead and make our verticals, make our verticals, make our verticals, and we're gonna count how many points. That has two, this has two, this has one, and this one has three. So is that a function? No, because they have more than one. Okay, 
and we only have three more problems left. So let's continue on. Let's go ahead and make some vertical lines. Vertical line, vertical line, vertical line. And so this one only has one, one, one. So for every vertical line or for every X, there's only one Y. So then yes, this is a function. Again, the reason why I'm going over so many examples and the reason why I really want you to stick with each one of the videos all the way to the end is because your skills are going to improve by doing the same problem over and over and over and over. When you guys just get a couple examples and then you just move on to the next one, you may feel confident with it for a little while, but then you go back on your test and you're like, oh man, I forgot what to do. But if we do this so many times over and over again, it may be a little bit annoying now, but it's going to stay with you when you go ahead and you take your test. You guys are going to remember that for every input, there's only one output. You're going to remember inputs are the X's, the outputs are the Y's, and you're going to know if you have a graph and you need to determine whether it's a function, you just make a line that's vertical and you count how many times that vertical line goes to the graph. So for our last two questions, let's go ahead and do this. So we're going to make our vertical lines and then we're going to see, okay, they only go over one time. So that means for every input, every X, there's only one Y. So yes, this is a function. And then what about the same graph, but upside down? Let's go ahead and make our vertical lines. And each one of these only go through one time. So yes, this is a function. So I hope this day has helped you. I know I started with a little bit of information, but I want you guys to have a little bit of background knowledge and then having that background knowledge and applying it in a very easy way over and over again is going to help you guys to really feel prepared. So I love you guys. I hope this has been helping you. If you like to leave a donation for my channel, I'm going to leave um, a way for you to do that. I'll leave a link in the description box. And thank you so much for everything. And I'll see you guys in the next one.